So your test is going to be two classes from now. That'll cover five, five, six, one through six, three. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Ward. Okay. So today we're going to talk about vectors in the plane. A vector is. Um, we're going to represent vectors as directed line segments. We're going to write the component forms of vectors. We're going to do basic operations with vectors. And then we're going to find a unit vector, which is on there, but we're going to do it. And we're going to find the direction angles of vectors. And sadly, we're probably not going to get to this last one today. We will finish that up the following class. Yes? All right. So what a vector is, is it's a way to, uh, it's a mathematical way to draw a line segment. And that line segment is representing two things. It's representing the direction and it's representing the magnitude. And magnitude will eventually be what we call the speed or the velocity of that vector. Does that make sense? Sure, it does. So I am going to start with, you're going to read it as you, so if I have a magnitude, I'm going to read the magnitude. The double lines means magnitude. So I'm going to read it as the magnitude of vector PQ. And then sometimes I change PQ to a different letter like U or V or W to represent the vector. A vector, if it's represented as a single letter, will be a lowercase letter. If it's represented by the two endpoints, it'll be represented by two capital letters. Does that make sense? Sure, it does. So if I have, the, so what I'm going to do to find the magnitude of a vector, I'm going to use the distance formula to find the the distance, how long that line segment is. Does that make sense? So if I have, let me see, I think I give you one. So um, we're going to use a distance formula. And if two, if, two magnet, if two vectors have the same magnitude and they have the same direction, then I'm going to say those vectors are equal, even though they may be on different places on the coordinate plane. So what that means is if I have my and I have a vector here and I have a vector here, even though they're not in the same place, if they have the same magnitude and the same direction, I'm going to say those two vectors are equal to each other. <clears throat> so let's talk about doing one of those first. So here I have U represented by the initial point P, which is 0, 0, the terminal point Q, which is 3, 1. So if I were to plot that, P would be 0, 0, 3, 1, to draw the vector, here's my initial, here's my terminal, and then I put an arrow to show the direction that that vector is going in. You have to have that arrow to show the direction. The arrow can be anywhere on the line. Usually they put it in the middle somewhere, not on the end, so it looks different than array. Uh, the other, so this is U. So this is U. And then V is they're doing 2, 2, and then 5, 3. And that's vector V. And I want to show that those two are the same. So if I have a smart board, which I do, I could pick up this vector, bring it down here, and see if I put it right on top of each other, they are the same. Does that make sense? But you can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the magnitude of both. So I'm going to, to find the magnitude of U, I'm going to do the distance formula. What is the distance formula? So you take the difference of the x is squared plus the difference of the y is squared and you add them up and you take the square root. So and so for u, my I'm gonna do 0, 0, and 3, 1. So I'm gonna do 3 minus 0 squared plus <clears throat> 1 minus 0 squared. There's no one zooming in, right? And then this is 9, so the square root of 10. Oh. No. Then V, if I'm doing V, <clears throat> I'm going to do the... I'm going to do... 5 minus 2 squared plus 3 minus 2 squared. So that's going to end up being 3. So that's also going to be the square root of 10. So they have the same magnitude. To show that they go in the same direction, I'm going to look at the what. Which shows, tells me what direction. <clears throat> 
So I, I want to find the direction. So I basically want to find the slope. So I'm going to do rise over run, yes. So for the first one, can I, well, hmm, I'm finding the slope. So I'm going to do uh, 1 minus 0 over 3 minus 0 and get 1 third, yes. To find the slope of the other one, I'm going to do 3 minus 2 over 5 minus 2 and get 1 third. In order for the vectors to be the same, yes. <clears throat> so since these are the same and these are the same, then I'm going to say u is equal to v. I've just shown that u is equal to v. They have to have the same magnitude. They have to have the same direction. Good. Okay, the component form of a vector is when I rewrite it. So, so when I look at these two vectors, see how this one started at the origin and then I have my terminal point? That one's actually in what I call component form. So in order to be in component form, you want your initial point to be at 0, 0, your terminal point to be at the end point. So to do that, you're always going to take terminal minus initial. And what that'll do is, so if I go back to this one, and I look at this R and this S, if I were to put that into component form, this would be my terminal side, this would be my initial side, and I would take terminal 5 minus initial 2 and then 3 minus 2 and I would end up with 3 1 that would be my component form what do I notice about that 3 1 when I compare it to the other one it matches this one and it should because if I'm doing it in component form I want the initial side to be 0 0 well that one already had the initial side at 0 0 so all this is saying is to find it in component to put a vector in component form, you're going to take the terminal minus the initial. <clears throat> terminal minus the initial. And you have to, I always say that to myself, oh, why did I not clear that page? So if I, I like I just made up one, like if I make up a vector, let's say I say P is equal to 4, 7. And let's say I say q is equal to negative 2, 9. And I ask you to find the component form <clears throat> of pq. So there's my vector pq. My initial side is p. My terminal side is q. Yes? So to find the component form, so now I'm going to put it into those brackets, those v brackets. I'm going to take the terminal, which is negative 2 minus the initial, and then 9 minus 7. And the component form is going to be negative 6, 2. That's the component form. What that's basically doing is it's picking up this vector and putting it so it starts on the origin. And the reason why I want to do that is when I go to find the magnitude, I no longer have to subtract these order pairs anymore. I could just use negative 6 squared plus 2 squared and take the square root of that. Does that make sense? And then to find the slope, I would just take the y over the x, because I already have the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. So it's an easier way to work with vectors by having it in that component form. And somewhere, and I, I guess I didn't, they told me I didn't, unless they lied to me, somewhere write down that if the magnitude is equal to 1, then you have what's called a unit vector. <coughs> What? No, those are magnitude brackets. What? Determinant of the determinant. No. That is not correct. It's I don't even know how to equate it to an absolute value. Hmm. All right. If the magnitude is equal to zero, what does that mean? 
you have a, well, I, I can read that. It's a zero vector. Yes, it is a zero vector. That is true. But what does that mean graphically? What does that mean about your terminal point and your initial point? They're the same. So they're the same. So if the terminal point and the initial point are the same, what do you have if I graph it? Xavier? Yeah, you have a dot. You just have a single dot. And a dot is a vector. It's a vector with a magnitude of zero. So if you have a magnitude of zero, don't tell me you don't have a vector. You do have a vector. Does that make sense? <clears throat> yes, Mrs. Ward. Yes, Mrs. Ward. All right, so this one, I'm telling you that you have an initial point of negative 2, 3. I'm telling you you have a terminal point of negative 7, 9. I want you to find the component form and the magnitude of the effector. I'm going to pause and you're going to do it. Yes? Sure. Maybe. So to find it, you're doing taking terminal, terminal minus initial. I, you, you may want to terminal minus initial, right? So my terminal is negative 7 minus my initial, which is negative 2. And then 9 minus 3, terminal minus initial. So when I do all this, this will end up being negative 5. So this is the component form, yes? yes. That's the component form. Now to find, and then they said, I think, let me read my notations. So it says vector v, so I'm going to say v is equal to this, yes? Now it wants the magnitude of v, so I write those double lines to show that I'm finding the magnitude. And then I do the square root of... Well, technically negative 5 squared plus 6 squared, which is 25 plus 36, which is 61. Square root of 61, and I'm going to leave it as the square root of 61. Okay? If I wanted to, if it were a word problem and I would have wanted to know the length of this line, I would take the square root of 61 and get 7.8-ish. So the length of this line is about 7.8. Does that make sense? The length of this ray, about 7.8? Yes? If I wanted to have a magnitude of 1, what would I do to the magnitude that I have right now? Think about that. We'll come back. You're pausing. I'm thinking. Divide by square. Magnitude of square root of 61. So in a word problem, the magnitude of 61 would mean like this. If I were talking about planes, because I love talking about planes in this section, the speed of the plane would be the square root of 61 or 7.8 miles per hour. That's a very slow plane. How about a bike? The bike is 7.8. Okay? <clears throat> so this one, I want to do what's called scalar multiplication. To do scalar multiplication, you're multiplying or dividing. Well, we don't really divide in vector world. We multiply by the reciprocal. So you are going to multiply by one number. So like, I'm going over here to my thinking bubble. And if I said you, I don't, shouldn't say you. Well, I can say you. If I say u is equal to 1, 4, and I wanted to find 2 u, I would just take 2 times 1 and 2 times 4 and get 2, 8. Does that make sense? Okay. So when you do that, whatever you do, the end of the operation is usually called your resultant vector. So here, if I tell you that I have 3, 4 is v, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is V, yes. See how I put my initial point at 0, 0? Because it tells me that it's in component form. So that tells me my initial point's at 0, 0. My terminal point's at that 3, 4. I have to put the direction that I'm going in with that arrow. Everyone good? Yeah. Now, now they want to do negative 2V. So what I did is I took 3 times negative 2, and I did 4 times negative 2, and that's how I got that negative 6, negative 8. That's doing it algebraically. To do it graphically, because sometimes we want to make you do it graphically, just for the fun of it, I have this vector here, yes? If it's negative, it's going to it's going to flip over what? The both the y and the x, otherwise known as the rotation of 180 degrees, or the origin. I was going for the origin, but... 
So, so you're going to rotate it over the origin. So instead of it going up to the right, it's going to go down to the left. Are you with me? And since I want two of them, I'm going to do this line twice. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Ward. And then if I'm having a good day, which I don't know if I am or not, this point here should be negative 6, negative 8. That ordered pair. Yeah? That's me doing it graphically. 95% of the time, you're just going to multiply by negative 2. Oh, good point. For this guy, we we'll go that way. Okay? The, no, where the end point determines what quadrant you're in. Like, since this end point's in the third quadrant, I'm in the third quadrant. I could if my end point were like negative 2, 5. Then I could be in the second quadrant. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, because if I were negative 2, 5. <clears throat> You're welcome. Moving on. I think I'm done with this page. Yeah, I am. Um, so if I have two vectors and I'm going to add them, the, 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 the addition is what's called the resultant vector, usually represented by a capital R for resultant. Um, so so if you're adding two vectors, what you're going to do is you're going to take your x-coordinates and add your x-coordinates, take your y-coordinates and add your y-coordinates. If you are subtracting, technically they want you to think of adding the opposite. And then I've already said if you're dividing, you're multiplying by the reciprocal. Yes? So let's just do one, shall we? Oh, no. We, I don't have one. Do I have one? I don't have one. Am I going to have to make up? Oh, I do have one. There it is. I knew I had one. So u is 1, 2. v is whatever that was, 3, 1. You want to find u plus v. I did. You know. So u is 1, 3. Well, I'm sorry. u is 1, 2. v is 3, 1. <clears throat> you're going to add them. Then you're going to subtract u minus v. And then you're going to do 2u minus 3v. So at first, I would probably just add them and subtract them and then do the 2 minus 3v and then try graphing it. Does that make sense? I'm pausing for a second. Okay, so here's all my work. So I have 4, 3, and then here this one's negative 7, 1, and then the one in the middle is negative 2, 1. Yes? Everyone got those answers algebraically? If they ask you to do it graphically, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph u, which is 1, 2. So 1, 2. That's u, yes? And then v, technically v is 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. So that's that vector there. So when you're adding them, you're taking one vector and adding it to the other. So I'm taking this vector and I'm starting it at the end point of this one. Does that make sense? And then my revolts, resulting vector is where I end up. Oh, my goodness. I can't. F I am recording. That's unfortunate. One, two, one, two. That's okay. We all make mistakes. We're still good people. One, two, three, one. Even though when I grade, you probably feel like I'm. So now I'm putting this at the end of that. Yes. Well, here's the thing. So, and I, and I need to be a little bit neater than this. So let me be a little bit neater. So here's here. And then, so I can either take V and put it at the end of U and end up here. Yes. Or, or I can put this one back and put him at the end and I'm still going to end up at the same place. Does that make sense? So, so then that, the, the u plus the v would be this vector here, which is how I got that 4, 3. So when I do u minus v, 
I have to go in the correct order because of order of operations matters in subtraction. When I'm doing u minus v, I'm taking this v and it's going to go in the opposite direction. Does that make sense? So it's going to go down and to the right, and that's how I'm going to end up. Why is this so messed up? And that's how I'm going to end up with that negative 2, 1. No, well, it kind of is. I can fudge it, yeah. And then this one, to do 2u minus 3v, I'd have to double u. So I'd have to draw u and then add another u to the end of that. And then do 3v's going in the opposite direction. Or I would just do it like that. Let's just do it like that. Because 3u, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Oh, oh, you know what? I did. I know what I did wrong. Nobody caught me. That should go up there. Yeah, it starts at the end point, so that's negative 2, 1, yeah. Glad you asked that question. I have to fudge my numbers. Yeah, because on an exam, when you try and fudge your numbers, you actually make more mistakes than, yeah. When you just when you know what it's supposed to equal and you just make the numbers equal what you know it's supposed to equal, doing all the wrong work to support that. <laughs> like when you cheat and do it all on your calculator and then try and convince me that you knew how to do it manually and you just make like five mistakes to get to the right answer. All right, so a unit factor has a magnitude of one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and this is the, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the magnitude of v and take the vector v and divide it by that magnitude. So I'm going to, so technically you would probably multiply do this and then you would have that vector v. Does that make sense? That's what you're doing. It's scalar multiplication. So if I want to find, so that's going to knock it down to what's called a unit vector. So if I have a vector that's 7, negative 3, and I want to find the unit vector, the first thing I have to do is I have to find the magnitude of this v. I have to find out how long it is first before I can divide it by that to knock it down to 1. So I'm finding the magnitude of v. To find the magnitude of v, what do I do? I don't have to do the p2 minus p1, q2. I don't have to do that anymore because it's in component form. Yes. So that is 49 plus 958. So it's the square root of 58. That is the magnitude, which is about 7 point something again. Yes. Uh, it's 58 is 2 times 29, right? And so there's no perfect squares, but if there were a perfect square, I'd have to simplify it. And now what I'm going to do, so now this has a magnitude of 58. I want to take this vector. 7, negative 3, that has a magnitude of 58, and I want to multiply it by the reciprocal to make it have a magnitude of 1. Are you with me? So then I'm going to have 7 over the square root of 58, negative 3 over the square root of 58, and I'm going to change that v to a u. Why did I change it to a u? Because it's a unit vector now. Yes? Now, would I ever, sitting in the honors class, leave that answer the way it's written right now? Absolutely not. You have to rationalize it. So 7 times the square root of 58 over 58. Negative 3 times the square root of 58 over 58. If anything simplified between the 7 and 58 or negative 3 and 58, I would have to simplify it. But nothing does, so I'm going to leave it like this. arrows. Oh, can I do this in my calculator? No. Can I do it in my calculator? Yes. Can you do it in your calculator? No. What? I would never know. Oh, the ACT, they'll toss you out. I don't want to hear that. Then the last part said the, it wants me to verify that this has a magnitude of 1. Yes. 
did not say that. So I'm going to do the square root of 7 times the square root of 58 over 58 squared plus negative 3 times the square root of 58 over 58 squared. And when I do all that, what should it equal? 1. I believe, I'm, I'm stuck in this belief system, that if I actually put this in the calculator the exact way that I did it, my calculator is going to give me 1. You can tell me if I'm lying to myself. <clears throat> I don't think I am, though. Huh? So you got one, yes? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the unit vectors. So if I have a unit vector 1, 0, so 1, 0, unit vector 1, 0 would be this, yes? And a unit vector 0, 1 would be this. Everyone with me? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this my i axis and this my j axis <clears throat> because this is what's called linear combination. And just make sure that the i, even though the i is going to be italicized and bold, it's not the imaginary number, square root of negative 1. It is i. So when I, if I give you the component form 3, 4, and I ask you to write it in linear combination with the unit vectors i and j, all it wants is 3i plus 4j. The comma goes away, it's replaced by a plus sign. If I had a unit vector, if I had a component form that was 3, negative 2, then the linear combinations, the unit vectors i and j, would be 3i minus 2j. You good? If I had one, let's, let's, negative 4, 6, that would be negative 4i plus 6j. And then just for fun, I'll give you one I didn't get the other class. Let's say I had 3, 0. I could just write that as 3i. Oh, no. It's okay. It's a sweater. I'll never wear this. Well, I love the sweater, so I'm going to wear it again. But it messes up my board. No, no, no. Okay. Everyone good? So, so if I have an initial point of negative 2, 6, terminal point negative 8, 3, I want you to write in the linear combination standard form i and j. Notice back here when I did all this, they were already in component form, right? Because I was just hammering home the idea. So what do I have to do with this first? I have to put it in component form. To do component form, Brent, what do I do? So helpful. Terminal minus the initial, yes. Say that like a thousand times before you go to bed tonight. Terminal minus initial. So my terminal point is negative 8 minus my initial negative 2. 3 minus 6. So I'm going to have negative 6, negative 3, yeah? So now that's, that's the easy part. So that's the component form. Now to do the i and j, I'm just going to do negative 6i minus 3j. Yes? I just had a nightmare that I stopped recording. Okay, moving on. So, how do you miss that? That was like good stuff. I should, I'll write it neater. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so now you knew I was going to throw the trig back into it, right? You knew that was coming. So when I do, when I have it in component form, it, it, you, when we graph them, we plot the x and we plot the y, yes? So then I'm going to switch it to here, and I want to explain to you how I get to the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. So what I did is I said, let's suppose I have this triangle. I'm supposing that I have this triangle. And let's suppose that my x value is the square root of 3. Let's suppose that my y value is 1. If I asked you to find the magnitude of this vector, you would tell me the magnitude of, I'm um, sorry, not the magnitude, bad word. If I asked you to find the hypotenuse of this triangle, you would tell me what? 
which it ends up being two, yes? Yes. So if I had this vector and just this guy is going to be my vector, yes? This is going to be at 0, 0. So it has initial sign at 0, 0. So the component form is the square root of 3, 1, yes? Yes? Yes. I'm telling you, you're going to have to use pretty much every math skill you've ever learned in this one problem. Yes. No, that's a lie. That's your trick. So here, if I want this, is the, I'll call this V, right? It has a magnitude of 2. If I wanted to write it as a unit vector with a magnitude of 1, what would I do? Yeah, I'd, I'd take 1 half times the square root of 3, 1 to make the unit vector, right? Because we just learned unit vectors. So this would end up being the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Yes? Those should look extremely familiar to you right now. They're from the unit circle, are they not? And if I ask you to backtrack and find this angle, if this were the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half on my unit circle, you would tell me this angle was what? 30 degrees. So when I do unit U, I'm going to say the cosine of 30 degrees, sine of 30 degrees. Like here, the first one I had was the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Yes? That was my x and the y. If I do the cosine of 30 degrees, that's the square root of 3 over 2, sine is 1 half. It's the same thing if, if I know the angle. Up until this point, we haven't talked about finding the angle yet. If I do linear combinations, it's just going to be cosine of a times the sine of j. Same thing, right? Okay, yeah. now here's where to find the angle, because we have not done this yet. To determine the angle, I am going to do the tangent, which should make sense to you, because if I want to find this angle here, opposite over adjacent, yes? So if I want to find the angle, I'm going to use the inverse tangent to do that. There is a problem, though. Let's talk about the problem when we get there, shall we? So here I have this directional angle, yes? I want you to find the angle. So I tell you that I'm at 6i, negative 6i, plus 6j. That's where my point is, yes? So if I wanted to write it in component form, I could write negative 6, 6. You with me? Now I want to find the angle, so I'm going to say the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite. Well, what, what's the opposite? 6. What's the adjacent? Notice it's always going to be your y over your x, yes? So I should write that tangent of theta, y over x. So there I wrote that. So now I'm going to do the inverse tangent. I would probably just put negative 1, but then I got asked how I got negative 1, so I don't want to explain that again. Yeah? When I do that on my calculator, what do I get? Mr. Miller, are you with us? What would you get? Yes, put in degrees, please. <clears throat> Negative 45? Get negative 45 degrees, which is the correct answer from your calculator. So what your calculator is telling you is it's giving you negative 45 degrees, yes? So it's giving you this vector down here. Does that match the picture that I have up there? Absolutely not, but I notice that it is actually how far away? It's rotated 180 degrees, so I'm going to take this <clears throat> negative 45 degrees, add 180, and I'm going to get 135 degrees. That 135 degrees matches a vector in the second quadrant. Why did my calculator give me that answer in the fourth quadrant? Yes, the tangent of negative 1 actually, well, when the tangent is equal to negative 1, that happens two places. The inverse tangent is only defined in the first and the fourth quadrant. 
So your calculator is only going to give you an answer from the first and the fourth. If your vector is in the second or the third, you have to adjust. To adjust, you just add 180 degrees. Either way. <clears throat> so I get 135 degrees. Everyone go with 135 degrees? That one was pretty easy because that one you should have recognized from your unit circle, yes? Now let's do one where it's not on my unit circle. So now... Because you're always going to add 180. If, you, if, you, if your vector is in the second or the third quadrant, whatever angle you get is going to always be 180 degrees opposite. Does that make sense? So this one you're doing right now. Owen, how did you set it up? Oh my God. Bro. So there's my negative 7i minus 4j, yes? Then my component form is negative 4, negative, negative 7, negative 4. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so the inverse tangent is the y over the x. So can I just, I'm going to make that 4 sevens, right? Because it simplifies to 4 sevens. You can do the negative 4 over the negative 7 if you want, but well, you do that and you change it to degrees. Yes, and when I do this, when I first do this, Owen, do I have an answer yet? I got it. Let Owen answer. He wants to answer something today. Two decimal points. <clears throat> What'd you get? Mention I'm not a paid person. <clears throat> Either multiply by 180 and divide by pi, or go to your catalog and do the DD button. Or you could do that. But it doesn't go back and change that answer. You just change it before you start the problem, right? What? Yeah, 29.74 degrees, which puts that angle up here, yes. And then I can see that I'm halfway across, so I'm going to add 180, and I'm going to get 209, 209.74. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, 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 yeah. So if you if you do the DD button and it makes it a degree, then you cannot just add 180 because then it switches that back into radians and adds 180 radians instead of 180 degrees. If you put plus 180 degrees with the degree symbol, then you should get the 209. That's a calculator problem. All right. So here's the only word problem that I'm, oh, I have plenty of time. I can do the whole thing with you guys. All right. Find the component form of a vector that represents the velocity of an airplane descending at a speed of 100 miles per hour at the angle of 45 degrees below the horizon shown in this picture. Yes? So below the horizon, this angle here is 45 degrees. You with me? That's great, and that's wonderful, but I have to use my trig angle, which would be 180 plus the 45, which gives me that 225 degrees. So to find the unit vector, here, I'm at 225 degrees. To find that unit vector, the order pair of that unit vector, I'm going to do the cosine of 225 degrees, sine of 225 degrees. That will give me my unit vector. And I know that from my unit circle, do I not? So I get negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Now, it should make sense that this is my unit vector because cosine squared plus sine squared is always equal to 
1. That was your Pythagorean identity that you learned. So I know that this is a new vector. I know that it has a magnitude of 1. I want it to have a magnitude of 100. So now I'm going to take this unit vector and I'm going to multiply it by 100 so that it has a magnitude of 100. And when I do that, I'm going to have negative 50 times the square root of 2, 50, negative. I did. I wrote it. Now, here's my question of the day. Let's see how bad it goes. If this is 45 degrees, and yes, I know my trig angle is 225 degrees, what is my bearing from here to here? Bearing. Yeah, 225. Because this is 180 plus 45. 225. Yes? Keeping that in mind. An airplane is traveling at a speed of 724 kilometers per hour at a bearing of 30 degrees nor northeast. The wind velocity is 32 kilometers per hour west. Find the result in speed and direction of the plane. Yeah? Huh? So does it make sense to you that the plane plus the wind is going to equal your resultant. Does that make sense? And the resultant would also be the ground speed, the ground vector. Does that make sense? So the plane has a bearing of 30 degrees. So from here to here is 30 degrees. I need my trig angle. What is my trig angle? What is my angle from here to here? 60. That should make sense to everyone, right? So the direction of the plane is going to be the cosine of 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees. That's the direction of the plane. That's the unit vector of the plane. How do I make it go its speed of 724? Multiply it by 724. Here's a good thing, though. If you're doing a plane problem, you can do decimals instead of doing the values from your unit circle. Thanks, Mrs. Ward. Oh, yeah. So you're basically taking 724 times the cosine of 60, which is going to be half, right? So that's 362, I think. I don't know what the other one is. Are you doing this on your calculator? Do you have a calculator? No, I'm, I'm out. I'm tapped out today. Four people came here without a calculator. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So twenty. So f t five, four out of twenty. Yeah. So one fifth. So twenty percent of the class came without a calculator, operational calculator today. That's pretty sad. Did anyone take 724 times the sine of 60? <clears throat> 627. Give me two decimal points. But you know what? You're going to keep that in there. You know what I mean? And go up and grab it later? Yes? Okay. So that's the wind. I mean, sorry. That's the plane. <clears throat> now the wind is going west. It's going west. It's going this. Huh? What? I don't know what that means, but okay. Okay, so here's west, yes. What is the angle of that? The wind velocity is from the west. I'm sorry, it's from the west going towards the east. So I should say towards the east. So what's that angle? Zero. Does that make sense? That's zero. That's my trig angle, zero. So then I'm going to do plus 30. Oh, I told you 30. Oh, 32. And then the cosine of zero degrees, sine of zero degrees. 
I'm multiplying by 32 because this is my unit vector has a magnitude of 1. Then my speed is 32, so I'm going to multiply by 32 to give a magnitude of 32. So this will end up being 32, 0, right? We are adding them together because the, be, I'm, I'll, because the plane plus the wind. Well, when you're up in a plane, right, and you're driving along, and, and I think it's delta. Delta, I told you about this on the headset, on the person behind funny. It tells you your wind speed, your plane speed, and it tells you your ground speed. It's fascinating to watch because the plane and the wind together, like if I'm standing on the ground and I'm calculating how fast the plane is flying, I'm calculating both the, the plane and the wind working together. Huh? The net speed, yeah. The net speed and net speed, because the wind is going to blow it slightly off course. Does that make sense? So, do I, does everyone agree with this? Yes? So then when I have this, I end up with, when I add them together, my resultant vector is going to be, I can do mental math, 394. And then you're telling me 627.00, yes? So that's the resultant vector. So that, if I'm looking at my pretty little picture up here, that's giving me this vector here, yes? which is the plane and the wind working together. Now I'm going to find the magnitude, and now tell me, if I'm standing on the ground, how fast that plane seems to be flying. Yes, sir? Yes, it does have an effect. And they have to calculate that. So, like... Have you ever gone on a plane and said, like, if you fly the same route over and over again, th there are times that based on the wind, that, that flight can be cut down by, like, 45 minutes if the wind is helping you versus if it's fighting you. So, so here I'm finding this. So the square root of 394 squared plus the 627 squared. I do want the answer. Uh, you're going to have to say that slower because I, I heard I heard 778.2 decimals. Nine, so 99. Nine. And then this is kilometers per hour. I believe the units were kilometers per hour. So if I go back up to my picture, does it make sense that the speed of the plane is faster? It should make sense because I'm further away. Does that make sense? Like this, this line is not, like... It's like the hypotenuse. Does that make sense? Well, it's not, oh, I shouldn't say hypotenuse. That was a bad word to use. Why should I have not said hypotenuse? Because it's not a right triangle. Okay. But, but yes, it should make sense that since the wind is blowing in this sort of the direction that I'm going, it's going to help me out. Okay. So that's, that's great. I got 700 kilometers per hour. Yes. Now I want to find the direction of the plane from the ground because that's going to end up where the plane lands, right? Kind of need to know that. So how do I find that? <clears throat> how do I find the angle? So like up here, I'm looking for this angle here. I'm looking for that angle right there. It's not 60. 60 is from here to here. I want this angle, which is from here to here, which is going to be less than 60 based on my drawing, yes? So how do I find that? How do I find the angle from in component form? How do I find the angle when I'm in component form? How do I find the angle when I'm in component form? Say it loudly. Y over X. So my Y is at 627 and 394. So I'm going to do the inverse tangent of that, yes. <clears throat> and we, yes, do you have an angle for me? No, because you don't have a calculator. Two decimal places.
So this angle here is 57.86, which I was expecting it to be less than 60, right? And it is slightly less than 60. That makes me feel good. But it wants the bearing. So this is a directional angle, yes, or, or the trig angle, however you want to think about it. Now I need the bearing, so I need this angle here. So I'm going to do 90 minus that, which is going to be 32.14, I think. <coughs> and that is my bearing. Isn't that great?